for joining me, Anne. So the CFC has had another big year of investments in 2022-23. What were the highlights? One of the big highlights is, is the scale of investments over the course of the year. So we made commitments of 1.9 billion. Uh, and of that, 1.2 billion related to renewable energy projects, which is terrific in, in, a, in a market where there are some headwinds. So the CFC has been allocated an additional $20.5 billion in its first capital allocation since 2012. Where will you be investing the additional capital? Yes, well, we're very, very excited about this vote of confidence by the government and um, appropriating $20.5 billion to the CFC. $19 billion of the $20.5 will be for rewiring the nation. So that's investing in the big transmission projects across the country to put capital into those those projects to capture renewable energy to help us get to 82% renewables. There's a further billion dollars which relates to the Housing Energy Upgrade Fund, which is the use of capital, and the CFC will work with partners here, to provide low-cost finance to help Australians improve the energy efficiency of their homes. Thirdly, we have an additional half a billion dollars uh, allocated under the Powering Australia Technology Fund, which will help us to invest in innovative, growing Australian companies using their technologies to help Australia get to net zero. So going into the new financial year, what do you think will be the biggest challenges in investing? There are some challenges out there, Amy. Um, obviously, the uh, economic conditions are putting some pressure on investments out there. But we're also working, of course, to help the government deliver on their 82% renewables by 2030. A big challenge uh, requires a lot of uh, additional renewable generation capacity coming into the system, a lot of it building out of, of, of transmission. Whilst we face some of the, the headwinds, inflation, supply chain challenges, labour shortages, and, and of course the cost of, of capital. What are some of the longer term exciting opportunities you're seeing emerge in the market? Well, one of the first ones that comes to mind, Amy, is, is hydrogen. Uh, a very important alternative fuel, particularly in industry where electrification is, is difficult and we need to substitute hydrogen for, for methane gas. Uh, we've already made some early uh, investments in the green hydrogen sector because we have the $300 million advancing hydrogen fund. So we'll continue to make those investments. Really pleased that the government has announced their hydrogen Head Start program, a $2 billion program to support uh, investment in particularly electrolyzers producing green hydrogen. The other area of course is climate tech, so innovative companies that are making an enormous difference to the future of abating carbon emissions both here and internationally. And lastly Ian, how is Australia going to reach its emissions reductions targets and ultimately achieve net zero by 2050? Um, we need to decarbonise the electricity sector, we need to um, decarbonise the industrial sector and there's some new policies and initiatives there, the safeguard mechanism most kind of prominently, um, but also agriculture, the built environment, transport, all sectors that need to, to decarbonise. It's also an exciting time for the investment community because I think there are, there's a vast array of, of investment opportunities across all those sectors. The CFC is really well positioned to use its capital to work with all these important sectors to help the country get to net zero by 2050.